Okay, um, here we have module 19. So the first topic is the square root addition or subtraction. So here what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the square roots and then if they are like terms, then we will be able to add or subtract them. So in my calculator, if I type the square root of 28, I get 2 square root of 7, but because there was a negative here, it's negative 2 square root of 7. Here I'm going to type in 3 square root of 63, and it tells me it's 9 square root of 7. Now since both of them have a square root of a 7 attached, these are like terms. So I, I can combine the like terms. So negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11. And then pretend this is just a variable, right? If you had negative 2x minus 9x, it's negative 11x. So you keep that square root of a 7 attached to it, okay? Another way to think about it is you are factoring out the square root of 7 to the right. So if I were to distribute this square root of 7, it would give me these two terms, right? And then you're just combining what you have in there, which gives you negative 11 square root of 7, okay? I like to think of them as variables and then just tag on that quote-unquote variable. Um, but if you have to factor out the square root of 7 on the right and then combine the like terms, that's perfectly okay too. So now I'm going to do the same strategy with this. So square root of 45, I get 3 square root of 5 plus 3 square root of 80. I get 12 square root of 5 minus 19 square root of 5 is just going to stay 19 square root of 5. So they all have a square root of 5, so I am going to combine those like terms, leaving me with a certain number of square root of 5s. So 3 plus 2 is 15, minus 9 is negative 4. And so this becomes my final answer. Um, the same thing I'm going to do here. So square root of 27 is 3 on the outside and 3 on the inside. Remember, this is a 1, this is a 2. So 2 goes into 1 0 times with 1 still left over. So this really isn't there. I still have 3 square root of 3z. Here, the square root of 75 can be done in the calculator. I get 5 on the outside, um, 3 on the inside. For the z, I do need to do the division method. So z's on the outside, z's on the inside, and now I'll divide to figure out the exponents. So 2 goes into 1 0 times with 1 still left over. So this term isn't really there, so I have 5 square root of 3 z. Now this is what they have in common, so that's what makes them like terms. So when I combine them, I'm just going to be figuring out how many square root of 3 z's do I have. Well, if I have three of them here plus five of them here, I have a total of eight of them. Okay, I may be able to do one more page. I don't want the videos to be too long. Otherwise, my computer system kind of gets overloaded um, and it takes too long to like sync the video and um, be available for me to upload it. Plus, little snippets of videos, probably a little bit helpful for you guys to retain the information than if I just try to do um, hour-long lectures, right? So, let's see this one. Simplifying a difference of radical expressions. So, I'm going to do the same thing as we did before. Simplify each one. So, there's no numbers in here, so the 14 is going to stay there. But I do have x's, so I need to do the division method for the variables. Now the index here is a 2. So 2 goes into 13 6 times with 1 left over. So this term becomes 14x to the 6 times square root of x. Now here um, there's only 1 inside here and it's not enough to come out. So this term is actually just going to stay the same. But if you notice everything matches. The variables match and the roots match, which means these two terms are like terms. So remember, when you combine like terms, all of the like stuff will stay the same. 
I'm just combining basically the coefficients. So 14 minus 6 is going to be, what is that, 8? Just make sure, because sometimes my brain does funny things. Yeah. So it's basically saying, like, I have um, 14 of these looking things, and I'm taking away 6 of these weird looking things. I'm still going to end up with 8 of these weird looking things, right? Okay, let's apply that same strategy for the next topic. So this one says simplifying a sum or difference um, of a radical expression. So same thing, it's just what's inside the radical is getting a little bit um, more complex, right? So you cannot take the square root of 2. So that's definitely going to stay inside the square root. Um, and if my base here is a y, I do need to put a y and a y, and my base here is a u and a u, and then I'm going to do that square root method, okay? You could do it with the 2 as well. Um, remember, this is a 1 and this is a 2. And then keep three of these bases go on the outside, and all three of these bases go on the inside, right? And then we start the division process. This is just there. It's like a factor that's coming down, okay? So 2 goes into the 1 0 times with 1 still left over inside. 2 goes into 1 0 times with the 1 still left over inside. And 2 goes into 2 1 time with none left over inside. So this really isn't there. This really isn't there. All you really have on the outside is y squared and a u. And what you have on the inside is 2, y, and u. So this is a typical problem like what we were doing before. Except this problem is longer because you basically have to do that process twice for two different expressions and then hopefully you have like terms and you can combine them in the end, okay? But it's essentially the same process as we've been doing. So here, um, it is a square root, so I can do the square root of 18 in my calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put plus 5u times and then I'm going to do this number. So the 3 is going to come out the 2 is going to stay in. For the y's, I'm going to put 1 outside and inside and then do my division method, right? So 2 goes into 5 um, one time, but still has 2 left over. So if I clean this up, when I multiply all that together, I get 5... Um, oh, I did that wrong. Um, 2 goes into 5 2 times with 1 left over. So when I clean it up, I end up with 15, and then I'm just going to put the y squared in front and the new in the back because that's the way it is written here, so it's easier to identify the same. And then on the inside of the square root, I end up with 2y. Now I have a feeling that I messed up, and I should have had a u here in green because these things are supposed to match. Um, and then therefore, I would have had to put a u here and a u here and 2 goes into z 1 0 times with 1 still left over. So this guy really isn't there. But on the inside of the radical I still have that u. And I need that in order for these two guys to be like terms, right? So I got y squared u, y squared u, and then the radical part is exactly the same. So again, visualize it like this. This is the term this is what's making it a like term, right? But you're just going to combine the coefficients. So 1 plus 5 of those weird things means I'm going to have 6 of these really weird things. Okay, same process goes to higher roots, okay? It's just with the higher roots we have to prime factorization, right? Because we can't use our calculator here. So if I go into, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my chart, and I figure out the prime factorization for 81, I get 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. If I go to my chart and I look for 375, I'm going to get 3 times 5 times 5 times 5. So let's rewrite this whole thing in its exponent form. So this whole thing becomes negative 4, the cube root 3 to the 4th, and then plus sign and then the cube root of 3 to the 1 times 5 to the 3rd. So for here I'm going to have negative 4 times and then see what comes out and what stays in, right? My base is 3. 
So three goes into four once with zero left over. Here I don't have anything on the outside, so I'm just gonna put my bases, three and five, and three and five, and then do the division method, right? Three goes into one, zero times, one left over. Three goes into three, one time, with zero left over. So if I clean these up, <clears throat> this is negative four times three, which is negative 12, and, oh, I messed up. Three goes into four, one time, with one left over. That was a mistake. My index three goes into four one time with one left over. So I still have a cube root of three left over for this whole term. That's this response for that whole term. My big fat plus sign. Here, this guy's not really there, that guy's not really there. I really just have a five on the outside and then on the inside I have a three, right? Three to the one is just three. So they do have their roots in common. So this is the common um, part there. So how many of those square root of threes do I have? Negative 12 plus five means I have a negative seven of these things left. 